Well, thanks very much. That was an absolutely terrific introduction. I'll remember that one for a while. Um, cartoons. I like cartoons. I hope everyone has a handout. Make things a little easier here. Cartoons are windows on the culture. Do you believe in evolution or creation? Both. I think some men develop from early ape-like creatures. I played college hockey with guys like that. <laughs> and some were created. Here's my theme. doesn't make sense. You're just jealous. <laughs> All right, here's the problem. You know, this audience, it's this false dichotomy between evolution and creation, and you can't be both. You've got to be A or B, but you can't be... Um, both together. Um, and I think this is a, a, a real struggle within our evangelical community. Um, always like starting with a few stats. And of course, it's that that doesn't make sense. And that's the theme I'm going to go through. Um, it's because people are trapped in this dichotomy. You're either an evolutionist, and when it comes to design, and you saw some earlier uh, slides today, uh, the delusion of design, you reject God, and of course you're on the scientific side of the house, or you're a creationist, you accept uh, intelligent design, you accept God, and you're on the religious side. But the question I have is, are we trapped in the dichotomy, or can we get beyond this either-or sort of approach to thing? Okay, and this is something that's, you know, in particular for, for our community. And, and, and I'm an evangelical. I, I, I love the faith. But within the evangelical community, we really wrestle with this issue, and in particular with the biblical text. And, yeah, there are a lot of stats out there. And on the back of your handout, you'll see this uh, website to a study of American evangelicals in 2004. And the key to a lot of these studies is what's questions being asked. And I love this question because it gets right to the point. The creation story in which the world was created in six days is literally true, meaning it happened that way word for word, and the number within it's, the, I'd say, basically the same in the Canadian evangelical community, is 87%. Can you see how we're locked and loaded to walk in to the dichotomy? Of course, and this is our constituency, and of course, we also have the tension with regards to the academy. So what's going on within the Evangelical Academy, and this was a, a study uh, published in the journal uh, Science by uh, Sutherland in 05, and of evangelical biologists in the uh, Coalition of Christian Colleges and Universities, the CCCCU, with regards to their view and origins. And they found that 25% are young earth creationists. By the way, that citation is in the back of the handle as well. 50% are progressive creationists, or classical old earthers. And I'm going to use this term theistic evolution just for the sake that came out of this uh, article, are theistic evolutionists. thing to note with regard to these stats, 75% of the biologists within our Colleges are anti-evolutionists, but inversely, 75% believe in an old earth. Well, that's within the biological academy, what's going on within the theological academy. And I mean, when I cut my, this is one of my first Bibles, you know, Charles Ryrie, the study Bible, uh, the NESB. And we've all seen charts like this with regards to the scripture, and you'll notice they're giving us dates, and you know exactly when the flood came about. And they're seeing this as hard and fast history. However, have you noticed in the Today's new international version, and we have similar sort of start, uh, chart at the beginning of the book. We have biblical history, and we see Abraham in place in Genesis 11, and we're trying to line it up with world history, and there's a lot of it that is constant. However, notice at the top here, pretty empty. And what I really was shocked when I bought my first copy of the TNAV is if you flip over to the other page, look what we've got. Nothing. And not only that, and you can't see it too clearly, those are all a bunch of question marks. So what's going on within the Theological Academy, hermeneutically in the er early uh, chapters of the scriptures? And just before getting on the plane, there's a great calling, a new friend I met up at uh, Trinity Western Ontario, a, a genesis named Dennis Vima, and he gave me this passage, and I almost passed out. And here's, here is one of the most important evangelical theologians living today, and says the following in his magnum opus of 1,400 pages that's just come out the best harmonious synthesis of special revelation of the Bible, of general revelation of human nature, as in the heart, and of science is the theory of, does anyone want to fill in the blank? Theistic evolution, does anyone know who it is? One of my former professors, I can't wait to get home and phone him up and say, Dr. Waldy, wonderful, wonderful man. Okay, what's my point? I think there's something going on within the community. Now, one thing I like doing is putting it 
right on the table. Where am I coming from? All right, I am a thoroughly committed and unapologetic evangelical theologian trained to the Ph.D. level. I am a born-again Christian. I believe the Bible is the Word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit. I drink from it daily every morning. I was in, in, in uh, Daniel 4 today in, in Nebuchadnezzar. And I believe in prayer and I experience miracles. I'm a charismatic Christian. And this is a loaded word. I believe in intelligent design. And you saw some intelligent design arguments just previous to me. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and so too does the cell. Uh, my brief definition of intelligent design is simply this, a belief that beauty, complexity, and functionality points to an amazing mind. And, you probably knew this was coming, I'm a thoroughly committed and unapologetic evolutionary biologist, also trained to the PhD level in the evolution of some of the best evolutionary evidence, the evolution of teeth and jaws. I have a dentistry background, so that was an easy move through. I am steeped in Evo Devo. That was my conversion point. I might add, I went into that second PhD as an anti-evolutionist with the intention of attacking evolutionary theory. I find, and I'm not the first one to say this, after three and a half years of seeing the data, the evidence is simply overwhelming. It has never been falsified. It is the easiest theory to falsify. Find me one human molar down in the Cambrian. I'll identify it for you. And this is not an exaggeration. We'll turn all the science upside down. And when it comes to the explanatory bo uh, power of biology, biology makes sense in light of evolutionary theory. If you want to know all those pseudogenes we've got that we share with chimpanzees, that's where it comes from. So here's my position. I love Jesus and I accept evolution. Praise the Lord, I've got tenure because let's get back to a secular university. I might get in trouble, right? <laughs> but that doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's see if I can try to make some sense to this. Okay, first terms and some definitions. Of course, we've got to do biblical hermeneutics. What am I doing with the Word of God? That, that's fair. And the naughty issue, whether you want to spell that with a K or an N of human origins. All right, terms and definitions. And this is in your handout. I think two terms that are so very important. And you heard the term just teleology in John uh, Bloom's lecture. Um, teleology, simply tell us a plan and purpose. Do you believe the universe has plan and purpose? Or is your universe a disteleological in which there is no plan and purpose, i.e. one suggested by, by Richard Dawkins? With regards to the word evolution, when I'm in the paleontology department, there's believers, there are unbelievers. When we do science, we look at evolution as simply being a natural process period, natural process going from molecules to people. That's it. No reference to metaphysics. And when I'm with my theological college in my, my Catholic school, or I'm with the Baptists and another college in Edmonton, we talk about the doctrine of creation. It's just simply the belief that all the stuff around us is a function of a creator. Of course, and here's the problem in the culture, evolution is conflated, collapsed into disteleological evolution. Do, don't let Richard Dawkins own the term evolution. It may well be that evolution is teleological, and you can narrow your plan and purpose ultimately, as I do, in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So with that being the case, notice what we can do. I am a thoroughly committed and unapologetic creationist defined in the professional theological sense of the thing. I believe the world is a creation. I believe in a creator. I am an evolutionist, not to be conflated with Richard Dawkins, radically different with Richard Dawkins, and thus that makes me a teleological evolutionist. Okay, this funny sort of term, evolutionary creation, I didn't coin it. It comes from reform circles. Howard Van Til introduced it to me in the 1990s. Um, most important term, the substantive, the noun, creation. Most important category is the creation, not the adjective evolution. Because you'll see this term, theistic evolution, and I find that this is an inversion of order that's not correct. Because look what you've got. You've got the noun, evolution, being the primary term, and you're having fails, God riding shotgun. God will never ride shotgun to any scientific theory, in my opinion. So evolutionary creation, and this is why I don't use the term theistic evolution. Another reason I don't use the term theistic evolution is becomes which theos, which God. And of course, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm often accused of being a deist. Uh, Charles Darwin in The Origin of Species definitely had a God, and you saw one of the quotes earlier with regards to the creator. It is not deism. It is not Ernst Haeckel's panpsychism. And remember this name, and you'll notice in one of the, I love the way some of these presentations sort of dovetailed. Uh, this is a guy who had an inordinate hatred for Christians, so it's not uh, Ernst Haeckel's panpsychism. It is not the pantheism, the physical pantheism, or Spinoza's pantheism of Albert Einstein, though there's a lot of God talk in some of his literature. And it is definitely not, and I oppose, the panentheism or the process theology of 
of Whitehead. Okay, how about a definition? Evolutionary creation. I believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit created the universe and life through an ordained, it ain't a mistake, it was totally the Lord's plan, sustained, he upholds every quark or whatever those small particles are for you physics guys, and design reflecting evolutionary process. One of the great ways of sort of looking at this, and this is not my argument, this comes from the 19th century of evangelicals coming to terms with, uh, with Darwin, Darwin's forgotten defenders, as David Livingston said, is to look at what goes on in the womb and carry the analogy over to evolution. What about divine action? Does any of us believe that when our mother's womb, the Lord came out of heaven and attached an arm and attached a leg? No. We think of Psalm 139 where the Lord knit us together within 